Wolf Den podcast. All right. Hello. I'm your host, Bob, and also your host, Will. That's me. Hey, I'm also included in this. Hey. Hi. How you doing? I keep hitting the thing. This wall is about to come down any minute now. Oh, man, you guys are going to see it live. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to see two people get crushed. DJ Skeletor, thanks for the gifted sub. May Peco Peco, thanks for the 14 months. Anthony Mele, thanks for the 100 bits. You know this... I'm going to ban you. Lord <laughs> Nora J, thanks for the six months. I went to another state for a week, and now the podcast is an hour earlier. Yippee. That's what happens. Wait. He's, he's probably in central time zone, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Professor Clockwork, thanks for the 17 months. Ah, the Wolf Den podcast, a brand new level in Mario Maker 2. What does that mean? Is that... Oh, we... am I in the Mario Maker 2 category? Damn oh. it! <laughs> <laughs> DJ Skeletor, thanks for the five gifted subs. How y'all doing? And Good Farmer Gooch, you. Oh, thank yeah. you for the five bucks. Can't forget Farmer Gooch. On YouTube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. Guys, big show today. A lot of news happened in the past week. I'm lying. Yeah. Literally nothing happened except it, it a, for a rumor that we'll talk about. It was a surprisingly light uh, news week last week. Um, literally nothing. Yeah. I mean, we had one late breaking story. Not late breaking story, but like it dropped today, mm -hmm. uh, which we will talk about. It involves Game Pass. Hint, hint, hint. Ooh. Um... But yeah, nothing really earth shattering. Nothing no. really exciting. Very slow week. I mean, uh, maybe. I'm sure there are some City Skylines fans out there who want our opinions on that deal, which we will talk about. Oh, people are going to be very upset. Yeah. Those those City Skylines fans. Oh, those fans City Skylines fans out there. Uh, there's a lot going on with Nintendo Switch Online. Yes. Everybody loves it when we talk about Nintendo Switch Online. Yeah. Uh, so... We have some evidence that the, that we might actually be getting a new system added yes. to Nintendo Switch Online. Uh, but before we get into that, there's other Nintendo Switch Online news. Yes. For example, there, you can play a whole free game. Is it this weekend? Uh, yes, it is this weekend. It is now. Uh, actually, it was yesterday until uh, July 14th. It's Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope. Bob's game of the year for whatever year that came oh, out yeah. in. <laughs> So yes, you can play, uh, you can download and try the entirety of Mario Plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope uh, for no cost if you are subscribed to this is Switch Online. The first one? The second one. Oh, second one, I, I ain't I never even touched. Yeah. Uh, as an added bonus, for a limited time, you can purchase the digital version of either this title or uh, the gold edition of Sparks of Hope for 67% off. That's a big chunk. Hold on, I gotta do math in my head. Let's just go to the game page on the eShop and see you can them. purchase the digital version of either this or the other one. Oh, or the, the gold, gold edition. edition. Oh, for a, okay. 67% okay. off. Oh, yeah. so while this thing is going on, yeah. you, you can get, you could purchase the main game for a discount. Cool. Yeah, it's a big discount. And also, uh, Switch Online members can earn 100 uh, platinum points by participating in the, this game trial. Uh, platinum points, if you re recall, are the worthless ones. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, should definitely play this for free. Yeah. And then make your decision. But yeah, do not immediately buy it for 67% off. Uh, I think these games are not that great. Uh, I mean, to be 67% off, the game is still sells for full retail, $60. That's uh, the discount for just the base game is $20. Damn. So you can get the whole game for 20 bucks or the gold edition for 30. Hey, that's a big value, but it doesn't change the Metacritic score. <laughs> Actually, this had a probably a pretty decent Metacritic score. Uh, I remember this being less well received than the first one. Yeah, they changed some of the gameplay mechanics. Yeah. I think that you, uh, instead of moving, uh, you had like a you kind of moved each character like a like a chessboard yeah and i think in this one it was more free roam mm -hmm. uh and that i guess changed some things i think what happened was this was the first mario game on the switch and it had luigi's mansion syndrome where luigi's mansion was the launch title so everybody thought this game's amazing yeah i remember you <laughs> and this was that. the first mario game so everyone's like oh man this game's amazing but it wasn't that good right 
Also, the guy who the game director cried on camera and everybody yeah, got so it. Was all every, emotional every, and sad, everybody yeah. was like, oh, I like this guy. <laughs> so that's that's why people like Mario Plus Rabbits. <laughs> um anyway. That's not the only free games you're getting on Nintendo oh, Switch no. Online. I shouldn't say free because you have to pay for the subscription. Right. But if you pay for the subscription, you got Seven, uh -huh. seven, seven NES games have been added to I the Switch Online counting. collection. I didn't realize they just wrote it up. There. Uh, Urban Champion, Golf, Donkey Kong Junior Math, Mock Rider, uh, The Mystery of Atlantis, Solar Jetman, and Cobra Triangle. All right, the only one of these that is relevant to me is Golf. Yes, <laughs> and that is because. The game was on the Switch already. Yes. When, if you don't know, when the Switch launched, hidden in the code was, of the Switch itself of the Switch itself was uh, uh, an emulator, an NES emulator that had golf on it. Yes. And you did some. It was some macro you did on the home screen, and it, like opened it up. You had to like perform the motion of Satoru Iwata doing the directly to you with the Joy-Con. In order to like get it to like a certain open. amount of times, like yeah. it was very specific and uh, and hard to do. Yeah, uh, and then it would open up golf, and and the game had motion controls and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this version is gonna have it. Probably not. Uh, is is it out right now? Uh, yes, out right now. Yeah, I'd imagine that this version probably doesn't yeah. have it then, because I I feel like we would have heard about that. Uh, but that version of golf that was on the switch uh was almost immediately patched out so yeah. the, you need to have a day one launch switch that was never connected to the internet or, or updated mm -hmm. in order to uh try that yeah it was so rare that people got into it that i thought it was a hoax right and i, I put, remember yeah i remember because there was like yeah. one video of a guy who did it and mm -hmm. i was like i don't believe this guy yeah <laughs> So uh, then eventually more people came out and said that it happened to them mm -hmm. and stuff. And then more people sent me videos. I made, a, I think I made a whole video that was like, this is a hoax. I don't yeah. believe anybody. <laughs> and if you do find it, send me a video. And then people, a lot of people sent me videos. So yeah. uh, turned out it was real. Uh, as for the other games in this collection, if you care, um, Solar Jetman and Cobra Triangle are actually rare games. Uh, oh. British publisher Rare. So they uh, have a good relationship with Rare. Yeah, they still do after all this time. Uh, I'm surprised this wasn't included in the last batch of Rare games that got uploaded to Switch Online, but they're here now. Uh, Donkey Kong Jr. Math, Golf, and Urban Champion are all black box games, so like one of the first wave of Nintendo games to come out. Uh, Donkey Kong Jr. Math is Donkey Kong Jr. with Math. I only uh, know that game because of the... Uh, eShop song the, the the virtual console song? yeah uh urban champion sucks it's a notoriously <laughs> bad uh fighting game on the nes nobody likes it uh mystery of atlantis i believe this is a super this is a famicom game that never came out in america so this is i believe it's north american debut yeah the title screen is in japanese yeah and I thought it was weird because they do not tell you what game it is until yeah. after the title screen. Then they put it in the corner. And then Mock Rider. That's a. It looks like a motorcycle game. Yeah. Let's see if I know anything. If I can look up anything in Mystery Mountain. That's another black box game made by Hal. Oh wow! Hal Hal Laboratories. Yeah. Wow. There you go. Yeah, this uh, Urban Champion looks like shit. Yeah, no, Urban Champion is um, not good. <laughs> So I know you guys are really clamoring for a new Nintendo, uh, uh, Super. Oh God, I can't. I, I'm having it. Oh, it's not having a good time, day. Dude. I know you guys were clamoring for some NES games. <laughs> you were like, "Man, there's so many good NES games that are left that are not on Nintendo Switch Online." Well, there's no more after this. Yeah, <laughs> not a single NES game left. They put them all on. Uh, they put them all on, and if you stand or, or the company that actually owns the title put it out in their own collection. So yeah, what is left? Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy, Star Tropics two. The Mega Man's are out. The Mega Man's uh, are out. On, the Castlevanias, uh, Contras. Yeah, those are all in their own collections. Maybe Ninja Turtles. That, no, that's in its own collection. In its own collection. Ninja Gaiden is out. Ninja Gaiden is three. No, wait, is Ninja Gaiden in the Switch Online? 
Yeah. No, one is definitely. One it. is, but not two or three, I don't think. And then, like, maybe those random licensed games that, like, you liked growing up as a kid, like Batman or some of the Disney stuff. Yeah, because the Disney Afternoon Collection never came to Switch, and that had DuckTales and Chippendale Rescue Rangers and Tailspin. Ninja Gaiden just won. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. So you got two more Ninja Gaidens that I'm sure will come eventually. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think we got more notifications. No, we didn't. DJ Skeletor, thanks for gifting a sub and all those other subs. Uh, Griffin X says Earthbound Beginnings is missing. It is not. It is on Switch Online. Wait. Do your research. <laughs> Earthbound Beginnings, uh, Mother One. In Japan or, or here? Here? Yeah. Oh. Yep. Yeah. It's there. Mother 3 is not here. Still. And Reggie's just sitting in his pool going, hey, 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 I don't <laughs> have to get asked about that anymore. Daniel Dueling, thanks for the $5 over on YouTube. Wolf Bros will say Mario wrong, and then seconds later say Wario correctly-ish. How do you say Maria? Dumb fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, congrats on beating wood at push-ups. Also, you hungry? 50, thank you. That was the same guy. Ah. He was nice all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. All right. So we're not done with Nintendo Switch Online. Talk about Nintendo Switch Online games. This no. is a story that I put here uh, because I was wondering what we should do as a main topic. And then I just went to YouTube.com slash Spawn Wave and saw what he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Hard-hitting journalism here Hard at the Wolf Den Uh so it turns out that there is some information that uh, is leading to maybe actually getting GameCube games on Nintendo Switch. That Online. is exciting. I thought they would be too greedy and mm -hmm. that they would make GameCube games individual purchases. Right. I, I thought that. Part of me was starting to think this might be a Switch 2 thing. It still could be. Yeah. Uh, the only evidence here that we have, the only or the only thing we're going on right now is I believe a patent for the controller. Okay. You know how they make a yeah. controller for every home console on the Tennis Switch Online? Mm -hmm. uh, we have the NES controller, we got the Super NES controller, we got the N64 controller. Yes. We even have a Sega Genesis controller. Yes, they made are, by Nintendo. They are making a GameCube controller, okay. supposedly. Okay. Uh, this is via Reddit on r slash gaming leaks and rumors, which I didn't even know existed. A uh, user of Fami Boards, Luigi Blood, we know Luigi Blood, yeah. I, I, I see him on Twitter all the time, uh, posted some customs shipping data. In this was discovered to be possible references to the GameCube controller with similar code names and parts to previous Nintendo Switch Online controllers. Another user, LIC, who is, a, I, I'm pretty sure, another leaker, Back this up, but both users still had reservations about what this means. Even though this is coming from public shipping data, kudo, kudos to those willing to take the time to do it, I still put the flare as rumor, because you can do that on Reddit, mm -hmm. since this is, con uh, con this is since nothing is confirmed until an official announcement or a more specific leak of what this means. You have to be registered source Luigi Blood's post, and, and then he just linked the post. Yeah. Uh, and I can't read them because I'm not registered. Uh, it looks like Luigi Blood responded. That's because I linked his response. Oh. He responded and said, good on you for saying that we still need have some doubts about it, but I am cautiously optimistic on this one. I have not said GameCube Nintendo Switch Online controller out of nowhere on this, though. The name of the PCBs I found very much could imply that. So it's not a patent. I was wrong right. about that. This is uh, supplier information. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the time being, as of May 2024, we can only see up to two months ago, it's in the prototyping stage while having definitely GameCube parts showing up. This I can 100% be certain about. The question is whether they are related to the PCBs I found. All of this showed up uh, on May 2024 and not anywhere before. So we're still ways off for now. So it's probably a Switch 2 thing. Yeah. I am waiting for next month so we can possibly have further ideas on what's going on. 
He goes on to say, I see the topic of the file size coming up for GameCube and Nintendo Switch Online. I just personally don't believe that to be a problem. People should stop thinking Nintendo is just fitting consoles into an app template. They showed to completely adapt to their systems. It should be obvious to anyone looking at how the apps work. Also, a lot of GameCube games, even if it's up to 1.5 gigabytes for a single disc game, most of the important games don't fill the disc. Heck, Mario Sunshine is 300 megabytes. Some are even lower than that. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So part of this thread was people arguing that uh, having an app for GameCube uh, won't really make much sense because GameCube games are big. Yeah. It would be the biggest games that have been on Nintendo Switch Online mm -hmm. so far because it's the most modern right. system that they've had. Uh, and Nintendo does seem to prioritize condensing all of their all of their uh, their games. Yeah. But they did back then too. GameCube games are not that big. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, at least Nintendo first party ones yeah. weren't. Uh, a GameCube disc can hold about, I believe, two gigs of data. And Nintendo specifically were very are still to this day very good about not taking up the entire yeah. cartridge space or disc space yeah. uh, with their games. They're very efficient in that way. Yes. Unlike an Activision with their quality. So uh I would imagine that if they had a GameCube app, it there probably wouldn't be many games at all on it. Right. It, I mean, N sixty four didn't drop with that many games. Yeah. Uh GameCube I'd imagine would be like five or less. Yeah, even. probably. So that would probably be the biggest file size if you're downloading the the app for GameCube, mm -hmm. but still probably not that big. It's probably only gonna be a couple of gigs. Yeah. And if this is a Switch 2 thing, those games are going to be bigger than the games we have now. They're still going to be pretty small as, yeah. as far as modern games are concerned. Uh, but Switch 2 games are going to be bigger than Switch 1 games yeah. for sure. There's going to be more stuff in it. Um, now, this is still a ways off because it's just supplies from a PCB. So they're still tooling things out and working things out. Uh it has the same sort of uh, listing that the other Nintendo Switch Online controllers had, which okay. is why they're thinking this is just the next thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know what exactly is linking this to GameCube specifically. I think he said that, that it uses GameCube parts. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what specifically. I think the buttons maybe, yeah. but I don't know. Uh, it could just be uh, another Nintendo Switch Online controller. But what else yeah. could it be? It's got to be GameCube. Right. They're, they're yeah, not going to make it for anything else. I mean, unless they randomly throw Sega Saturn on there. I would love know? for them to do something with Game Boy. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. If they just did anything even. Even if it's just an NES controller that's in the style of a Game Boy, that would be really yeah. cool. Um, I heard somebody bring up DS. Hmm. Now, that wouldn't come with a controller. That no. we would have to... They would just drop it. Yeah. It would just come out of nowhere. Um, I think DS is absolutely possible. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. P people think it's not because it's dual screen. Yeah, but like we've seen other companies put DS games on Switch. We got the Mega Man Battle Network games. Half oh, yeah. How do DS they do games. Um, I'm trying to think of other, like, not the Castlevania game, but there are other game like ds games on switch there's like ways to do it we emulate ds games on our phone all the time yeah and it works the problem. great yeah. uh, so, like i most games it doesn't matter if the screens are stacked on top of each other yeah. most games if they're side by side it's totally fine yeah. it's not a problem at all and a lot of these emulators that i use you click one button and it switches the screen so mm -hmm. you can have one screen full screen and one little tiny yeah hit a button and it switches and it's totally intuitive and works perfectly fine. Uh, we've had to do some workarounds with some of the stuff on Nintendo Switch Online right now. So I don't see the problem with yeah. doing something like that. As long as we get the games at all, I'm, I'm willing to, to put up with that. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff locked on the DS that people aren't able to, yeah. to play right now. So, so that, would be, that would be good. To yeah. have. Um, I do know that, um, I did want to note, Nintendo already makes or they made gamecube controllers for the switch specifically the smash brothers controllers uh i'm guessing this if they are going to do gamecube controllers now for switch online i'm guessing these are going to be the wireless ones yeah. they're going to make new wireless versions of the controller right um i mean hopefully the old gamecube controllers will still work with the switch online and these new controllers will work with like smash brothers and other games that's a good point yeah. i was thinking 
maybe this was for Smash. <laughs> maybe they're making a new Smash and they're mm. making a new GameCube controller for the yeah. new Smash. Uh, because the previous one was just a a reboxing yes. of the Wii U one. Right, which is literally just the reboxing of the GameCube controller. Yeah, there's literally nothing different yeah. about it. Um, but th there's something about the PCB that uses the same sort of numbering system yeah. that the other Nintendo Switch Online controllers use. So that's mm -hmm. why I think it, it's probably not in in correlation with a with a Smash game. Yes. Probably in correlation with Nintendo Switch Online. But that doesn't mean that you wouldn't be able to play it with Smash. Yeah. You can use the N64 controller right now for True. Smash. Yeah. It's horrible, yeah. but you could do it. Uh, now, one of the differences about the GameCube controller versus a regular Switch controller is the analog triggers. Yes, so that's a big one. this would probably have those analog mm -hmm. triggers. Also, too, the button placement. The A button, your primary button, is gigantic. So you yeah. know exactly what to hit, and it's in the right place. Yeah, luckily, the Nintendo Switch now has the ability to, like, remap stuff. Yeah. Although, can you do that on the N64 controller? I don't know. I think you, you can only do it for, like... Uh, you can only do it for, like, like... the Pro Controller. Yeah. Like, that's it. Yeah. Well, uh... Anyway, the GameCube controller that currently exists that Nintendo makes that you could plug in with the little Wii U adapter thing, mm -hmm. uh, the analog triggers work. Yeah. So this will probably be a similar situation. Mm -hmm. And I'd imagine it would work with Smash as well yeah. outside of the Nintendo Switch Online app. Uh, I think I also saw some talks that maybe Nintendo will go the way of selling games individually. Like... Just because we're getting a controller doesn't mean that the GameCube games that come to Nintendo Switch Online won't be sold individually. Yeah, I mean, we're already seeing that. Like, Metroid Prime was sold on its own. Um, Mario Sunshine was sold in a collection, but it wasn't part of, like, a specific GameCube bundle. Mm -hmm. um, we see, like, when they re-released the Wii games and the Wii U games, those are sold on their own. Those are yeah. not sold as part of a system collection. So there's precedent for Nintendo to sell the games of the more modern systems individually. Yeah, they're a bigger deal. Yeah, I, I think uh, they're more modern. There's it, it would. Uh, I think they're more appealing to modern audiences. Yeah, it feels definitely. like a bigger deal because it feels like a, a a more. It's more akin to like a Mario Odyssey or something. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, um, more Nintendo Switch Online stuff, the better. Yeah, uh, honestly, so, give you more bang for the buck. Well, they will probably charge more. <laughs> yes, I mean not to get not to get too far ahead in the weeds, but like this is def if this is going to be another Switch Online tier, this is definitely something that they could a hundred percent charge more for the ability to play GameCube games specifically. Yeah, I mean, in their defense, they are pretty good about like giving you a lot of value, so it, it wouldn't just be GameCube games. I'm sure there's going to be like other benefits to having. The, there's the switch online switch online plus expansion pack and then whatever the hell like this extra expansion pack is gonna be yeah and again it could it it could be rolled into the expansion pack pack or it could increase the price of the expansion pack or it could be individual games that mm -hmm. are just inside of the nintendo switch yeah. online uh, app mm -hmm. i think the app structure might change on the switch too i think mm -hmm. it might be one nintendo switch online app and then all of the retro games will be there yeah uh Aish says so this is why nintendo is cracking down so hard huh like on emulators and stuff. i mean it might be i don't know i think that they uh are just playing with the law and seeing what they're able to get away yeah. with that's what i that's what i think is happening and they're learning about how much they're able to get away with mm -hmm. and and they're acting on it accordingly. Yeah. So that's what I think. Daniel Dueling with two dollars. Turok was sold on its own. Don't give up hope. That's true. That was their own doing. That that, that was I think the first N sixty four game yeah. on, on the Switch. That and that's an interesting because like that was part of like Night Dive Studios like buying up old IP and like cleaning them up and like re releasing them, like re releasing games. Um so, like, yeah, unless other companies start doing that, then. All right. Um, what, what else? What were we doing? Uh, that's it. 
Just yeah. uh, just a, a little evidence that uh, GameCube games are coming. Uh, I would imagine it's a Switch 2 thing. It, it might yeah. even be a launch Switch 2 thing. That, I mean, that would be a big deal, I would think. Like, when they announced the Switch 2, announced, like, you know, changes to Switch Online and, like, the addition of GameCube games or whatever else they want to do to it. It would be pretty stupid if this was locked to the Switch 2. Yeah. The Switch is absolutely capable. No, 100%. But I can definitely see them, like, holding back GameCube games for the Switch 2 to entice people to get the Switch 2. Yeah, no, I could see them yeah. doing it, and that would be really lame and annoying. Yeah, 100%. Currently, uh, you said Metroid Prime. That's yeah. one that's on the Switch mm -hmm. currently. Uh, Super Mario Sunshine, which is unavailable. Yes. It, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's possible. It's there. Yeah. You can play it if you have it, but you can't buy it unless you go to Amazon and pay a hundred bucks. Yeah, for it. I'm trying to think of like if there are any other GameCube games. There's a that very were... small list of GameCube yeah. games that that are on the Switch right uh, now. I have here a on the Nintendo Switch uh, Wikia, uh, Ikaruga, Pac-Man Versus. These are all like ported over by the developers themselves. These are not, uh, these are not part of any collection. Uh, Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy. Okay. <laughs> uh, Cell Damage. Okay, this is a lot more than I thought. Uh, Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil Remake, Resident Evil Zero. Uh, Tie the Tasmanian Tiger. <laughs> Mr. Driller, Drill Land. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. SpongeBob SquarePants, The Battle for Bikini Bottom. Mario Sunshine. Asterisk and Obelisk XXL. Of course, everybody's uh, favorite. Tie the Tasmanian Tiger 2. Uh, 13. I believe that is uh, that is definitely a remake of the original game that nobody liked. Um, Wait, what do you what do you mean? So it's not like like these other games are either like uh, HD remasters or ports of the original mm -hmm. GameCube version. Uh, Thirteen is a straight on remake of oh, the game. Right, yeah, right, right. nobody liked the remake. Yeah, it doesn't count. Um, Tales of Symphonia, Metroid Prime, uh, Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life, Pikmin One and Two. Uh, this is a lot. Bat and Kaitos one and two, Alien Hominid, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. Forgot about that one. Oh yeah, yeah. And that's it. That's the last one. So there's a decent amount, yeah. but like it's it's not in a, an official Nintendo outside of Mario Sunshine, of uh, Paper Mario, and Metroid Prime. It's not like in an official Nintendo sanctioned capacity. This is like when uh, what companies were doing with uh, with their games. It's like what Capcom did with the Mega Man games. Right. You know, they didn't wait for Nintendo to do like a virtual console or switch online. They just released the Mega Man games on their own. So what are they going to do when Nintendo finally does have GameCube games available in its own app? What are they going to do about Pikmin and and uh, Metroid Prime and like games like that that they already released? Well, I can see them. Thousand Year Door. I can see them doing like the legit original versions of those games, like not the remaster. So, because Metroid Prime and Thousand Year Door are remasters. I could see that too, but I can't see Nintendo wanting to differentiate the two. Well, I mean, like, I can't see them being like, hey, this is Metroid Prime, the shitty version. <laughs> Well, I mean, you can play Metroid on NES through Switch Online, or you can play Metroid Zero Mission on gba through switch online you could play metroid zero mission or you could play the shitty version of metroid <laughs> zero mission so like there's precedent for it not right. maybe not a good example but like there is precedent for it yeah or you know this is a little different but like uh the sega ages version of sonic 2 is a much different game than uh sonic 2 on genesis collection yeah that is similar yeah. But uh, Sega just releases a billion versions of it because what else are they gonna do? They mm -hmm. got they they gotta they gotta milk that because they know I'm True. gonna buy it every time. Yeah. <coughs> so, but oh. I mean, there's many more GameCube games they can put out. There's like Wind Waker. There's Twilight Princess. There's Metroid Prime Two. There's Eternal Darkness. Uh, there's Mario Kart Double Dash. Politico Stefan says. There's that, Melee, all you Melee people out there. This is your chance. The GameCube version of Pikmin actually features licensed products, and Nintendo would would need to renew those licenses. That's no, there you go. You'd have to patch it out. I mean, yeah. I think one of the reasons why we haven't seen GameCube in so long is because that Nintendo does do a decent amount of work on all, every single ROM that they put out. Yeah. Um, 
doesn't look like they do because it looks like the same freaking game, mm-hmm. and a lot of people trash on their emulation quality, but especially in the N sixty four games, yeah. But they do put in work uh, into every ROM that they put out, yeah. and it, you know, as the games get more modern, uh, it gets harder and harder to do that. Mm-hmm. Melee would be crazy, yeah. Because they would have all online for that, and people would go nuts for that, yeah. And that would legitimize uh, the melee scene a little more. That yeah. would legitimize tournaments and stuff. I don't know how well. I feel like they'd probably, these tournament people would probably have a lot of issues playing on a Switch. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to keep the scene alive, then you got to mm-hmm. do what you got to do. Hopefully they'd have better online because right now the, the Nintendo Switch online is pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's move on. Okay. We can move on to this. Backlog! 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 Hey, man. It's backlog time. That's right. This is the part of the show where we go through our entire video game collection. Every game we have ever bought. It gets put in a little Excel spreadsheet right here. And today we're going to pick one random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we've played it. 964. Yeah, I wonder if it's going to be a GameCube game. 345. All right. 345. It is Nintendo Switch Sports for the Nintendo Switch. Okay. Have you played this at all? I have not played this at all. You are going to have to walk me through this. I was so hyped when this game came out. Mm -hmm. I remember. Because I'm a big Nintendo Switch. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm a big Nintendo Switch guy. Yes. But also, I'm a big Wii Sports guy. Yes. I love Wii I mean, Sports. everybody loved Wii Sports. It was the reason why people bought Wiis. For a lot of people, it was their only Wii game. So the fact that Nintendo is doing a spiritual successor, however many years later, on their next most successful system, like, that's news. That's important. That's, like, going to get people excited to play this game again. Yeah. Uh oh! I got an ad for my own friggin' channel. Ah, cool, man. loser. Uh, why did I get an ad? I'm, I have <laughs> premium. So the footage you're seeing here is from the Wolf Den Clips channel. The the some would say dead channel. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know which one this is, but before they launched uh this game, there yes. was a beta test. Okay. And I remember this beta test. They they said you weren't allowed to stream it or or review it or or post any footage of it or anything. Uh, I mean, that sounds like a Nintendo. And thing. I live streamed it. Never, I didn't give a shit. Mm-hmm. Nothing happened. What are they gonna do? Come to my house, kick down the door. Uh, that was a whole big controversy that happened. And the online was rough. It didn't work for like the first right. half an hour or hour. And there was only like a two hour window you could even play the game. Yeah. Uh, but when the game came out, everything worked fine. Uh, they have a bunch of different games in this, just like they do in Wii Sports. Yes. You have bowling. Mm-hmm. What else? You have Chikara, which, which is, is sword, sword fighting, play. Yes. which is awesome. Yes. Uh, you have tennis. Okay. Uh, you have... Just like Wii Sports. Yes. You have uh, three new sports, soccer, volleyball, and badminton. Yeah, a lot of them are just variations of yeah. of tennis. Uh, you have golf, which was uh, a free update uh, after the game came out. Yeah, golf did not come out at launch, which was very disappointing because yes. I loved golf on Wii Sports. Yeah, yeah, that was like one of the big the big ones in that. Um, and recently, as of this week, they released uh, basketball as a free update. I have not tried basketball. Yeah, uh, I liked this for a good couple of hours. But it did not have the same sort of magic that Wii Sports had. Yeah. Uh, it was fun getting on and playing with your friends. You couldn't really play with your friends on every uh, 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 game. Yeah. I, I think the bowling was weird. Like, it was hard to squat up in bowling. Um, but it was fun playing online against other people. We couldn't really do that with the original yeah. Wii Sports. Um, the Chikara was really, was really fun. Chikara... Chambara. Uh, Ch- Chambara? Yeah. Chikara. Ch- isn't Chikara the that video game where like he has to fight death or no, something? No, that's Shakan the Forever okay, Man. Yes. <laughs> we'll get to that one, <laughs> one day on the backlog. Um What the hell is this called? Ch- 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 Chambara. Shakira. Yes. 
Chambara is like sword fighting. It's really cool. It's basically rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. Uh, but with your hands, uh, with the motion controls. Uh, this was a lot of fun. But then once you kind of like figure out the rock, paper, scissors elements, it, there's not much to the game. Right. <laughs> kind of <laughs> kind of falls off. So I was really into this for a couple of days, uh, this Nintendo Switch Sports. And then I kind of fell off. And then I came roaring back because I was really excited for golf to drop. Yeah. Uh, I guess I don't have a, a stream of, of when golf happens, which golf. And I got to tell you, it's good, but I was still a little disappointed. I even went back and plugged in the old Wii yeah. to play the Wii Sports version okay. to see why. Like what? Am I nis- do I have nostalgia brain? Yeah. Like why don't I like this? Because theoretically, as like this should be a better, a better version of the same game because it's a better, uh, better controller, better motion controls, and absolutely. So what is it about the Wii Sports version that's better than the Switch Sports version? The motion controls are worse. There's really? something about I think the way the Nintendo Switch controller has rotational uh, movement. Okay, that breaks things in a weird way Got it, it doesn't feel good mm-hmm. uh it's fine it it, it, it if, if you don't want to bust out your wii u or, or your wii you'll be fine playing the nintendo switch version okay but i used to play the wii version so much that going to this i was like something feels a little weird and i have the wii right here yeah so i busted this out and i gotta tell you i felt a lot better playing the, really? the wii version i think that the switch joy con is a little too accurate and has a little too much movement that okay. plays into the game. I don't think it's uh I don't think this game is as well calibrated okay. as the the Wii was with the with the Wii motion. Controls. Now what about tennis and bowling? Because I don't have experience with Wii Sports Resort. I have experience with regular Wii Sports. Um Wii Sports Resort they added the motion plus so you had better motion control and whatnot. I never played that. Uh Wii Sports tennis I remember when I figured out that all you have to do to swing the racket was just do this with the with the Wii remote, that's all you need yeah. to do. Uh, how does it compare with uh, Switch Sports? Is it the same thing like with golf, where it's like too advanced for the game's old? Do you good? mean with tennis with or ten- with well with tennis and bowling? Uh, bowling, I think, also does have a little bit of nuance to mm-hmm. the motion. The motion controls are a little too accurate. It's I, I, it's very similar to the way that this is, but. Bowling, there's less, I guess, that could go wrong. Right. So I did get a similar feeling to the bowling on the Nintendo Switch Sports than I did on the bowling with the with the original Wii. Okay. Uh, which means that you can find the sweet spot and just nail it every time. Okay. Uh, I don't know anybody who has done that. Uh, I do know somebody who was really into... What's that game? Club Clubhouse games. Yes. And clubhouse games had their own version of bowling. Right. It just worked a little different. Like I think you didn't hold down the button or something. Like like yeah. in this, you have to hold down the button, and that one you didn't hold that. So okay. something was off. Um. But that game didn't feel like we we sports. Okay. The clubhouse games version of bowling. This feels a little bit closer to to Wii Sports. So if you liked bowling on the Wii and you don't feel like busting out your Wii just to play the bowling. I feel like there might be something here for you. Also, uh-huh. you got online play. And there's a lot of little mini games where like they put obstacles in the way and stuff. Yeah. Uh I think they had that on the Wii, but uh there's a little more to it on this one. Okay. Other than that, this is very very similar to the original Wii Sports in right. that there's only a couple of games and there's not much to the game. Okay. Uh honestly, this would have gone super hard if this was a pack-in game at the launch of the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, I think that was what made Wii Sports like the killer app because it came yeah. with every Wii, you know, and it was simple and easy to pick up and play. By adding more like nuance to it, like kind of like defeats the purpose of it being a much more casual game that like grandma can play. Yeah, and the Nintendo Switch didn't come with anything. It didn't come with the game at all, mm-hmm. but also it didn't come with anything that showed you. Uh, the capabilities of the technology of the yeah. controllers and, and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, did the PlayStation five come with Astro's playroom? Yeah. 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 That's amazing. Yeah. Like having something like that goes a long way. 
Yeah. Uh, this would have been the game that grandma could play. And know? what's interesting is this game came out in April of 2022. Uh, in November, it got of that year. That's when it got the golf update. Yeah. And then like, we didn't get another update to the game until now with another sport. This seems like the type of game like now with the online functionality and everything. Uh, it seemed like the type of game that they could update uh, periodically uh, with new sports or like sports from the classics games. But the fact that we just got basketball two years after the game came out, it seems like Nintendo themselves don't even care about this game as much as you know some of their other games, which is weird because it is actually it is one of the best selling games on Switch with over 13 million units sold. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot. That puts, according to Wikipedia, that puts it at number nineteen above games like Splatoon three, Mario Maker wow. two, uh, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, The Link's Awakening remake, uh, the the Mario three D All Stars pack. So I did find uh, there is a Wolf Den Clips video of uh, golf. Okay, it is called the most frustrating game on the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if this in this video I pull out the Wii. No, I don't think so. Another thing I forgot to mention is that you unlock outfits for your character and stuff. Okay. There, there are Miis, so you can like import your me. Right. But I don't think there's a me maker. You because the Nintendo Switch has Miis, but like not really. Yeah. They have their own characters in this game, and they're okay. ugly, and I don't like. Them. Right. I imported my me because I I gotta have the me. Yeah, that's most of the fun of Wii Sports yeah. was having your guy yeah. there. So I imported my guy. You can get little outfits for him and stuff. Right, uh, and you un the more you play, the more you unlock outfits and items, and like you can get a tennis racket and a golf club and and, and stuff like that. And that's cool because that right adds like a sort of grindy element. It makes you want to keep playing, keep winning, so that you can keep unlocking stuff. And some of the unlocks change week to week, so right, uh, it gives you something to log in and, and check out. But mm -hmm. if the gameplay is not going to hold you, then why would you want to unlock all the stuff? So, yeah. Uh, again, if you liked Wii Sports, there is something here for you, for sure. Um, but you might like Wii Sports better. Gotta say. Okay. That's all I got to say about it. Uh, I don't know. Do we know if they're coming out with any more stuff for the game? I Basketball kind of came out of nowhere. Don't know. Let me see. We knew golf was coming because when they announced the game, they said golf is coming later. Yeah. No, I don't know if um, they've announced any more sports, which is like because there's more you can do. Boxing was in the original Wii Sports. And yeah, that's, that's not disappointing here. that that's not uh, here. I mean, Wii Sports Resort had a lot of weird stuff. It had archery. It had cycling, it had uh, wakeboarding, <laughs> you know, so they can do, you know, they can do stuff like that. If are they going to, though? I don't know. Again, two years between updates is kind of crazy. Yeah, I would say it's done. Yeah. And Nintendo usually doesn't update things that long. They mm -hmm. usually don't support things more than two years. Yeah. Uh, pack this thing into the Switch, too. Yeah. Give it, give it a little go. 4K update or whatever uh and pack it in because yeah. uh i think that this is good if it you know was packed in or yeah i think this is a fun game for a little bit i don't think it's a 60 dollar game was it 60 dollars yeah it was definitely a 60 dollar game all right thanks for watching the backlog everybody tune into a podcast sometime at youtube.com yeah. slash wolf den podcast goodbye bye and as for everyone else we will talk about Game Pass. Okay. Talked about Nintendo Switch Online. Now it's time to talk about. Game yes, Pass. this is the f news that pretty much broke today. Leon Kennedy in the YouTube chat says, <laughs> "Clickbait." Hey man, <laughs> your name ain't actually Leon Kennedy. Your whole channel is clickbait. Oh, got you. Burr, 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 burr. Yeah, fuck, did Why is the Switch category for the podcast Super Mario Maker Two? I forgot to change it. I'll change it right now. I'm so sorry. Uh, all right. Talk about Game Pass. Okay. Uh, today Microsoft has confirmed to Windows Central that details on the long-expected Xbox Game Pass price increase, uh, is well and truly here. But it comes with some major changes to the basic Xbox console tier as well. 
Uh, Game Pass is Microsoft's Netflix like uh, all you can eat gaming subscription service. Nom, nom, so nom, blah, nom. blah, 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 blah. Uh, Microsoft rebranded Xbox Live Gold, the paywall for premium multiplayer titles to Game Pass Core a short while ago and has done some small price increases over the years. Now we're getting another name. We're getting another name change of sorts, as well as a major change to the basic Game Pass tier, as well as a range of price increases. Here's what we know. Soon, Xbox Game Pass for console will be shuttered for new users only. So if you haven't subscribed to Game Pass for console, do it now, because otherwise you won't be able to if you never have before. What the fuck? Users currently on the Game Pass for console will be allowed to maintain their subscription as well as day one games and the hundreds of titles in their back catalog. New users on Game Pass in the near future will be greeted by a new Game Pass standard. Oh no. This is more like EA Access, which includes Xbox's back catalog and does not include day one games. This will be priced... Huh? This will be priced at $14.99 per month and will also include Xbox Live Gold for multiplayer, now known as Game Pass Core. Oh, we could have made this the main topic. Uh, I didn't realize it was this dire. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't include Xbox Cloud Gaming. Game Pass Standard is supposedly launching in September. From September 12th, that's, 2024. That fucking sucks. That, uh, that's a big suck. That that's sucks. a very big suck right $15 there. $15 a month, is that what... Game Pass for console was? That's a That's lot. That's what Game Pass Ultimate was initially. What the fuck? <laughs> it, it, there's more. Oh, it doesn't no. end. Oh, no. From, uh, from September 12th, 2024. Like how you waited a day? Yeah. Good. Uh, Microsoft will only allow users to stack Xbox Game Pass for console up, uh, for up to 13 months using prepaid cards and the like, which will continue to function. If you have more than 13 months stacked already, you won't be impacted. So they're going to cap the amount of months you can stack to 13. Okay. You can't buy like 100 uh, gift cards and let's just have 100 months. So what if you just get a gift card? Then you got to wait. Then you, you got to wait. Sit on the gift yeah. card. That's so annoying. Uh, Game Pass Ultimate will not be changed, but it will get a price increase. It will still include PC Game Pass, Day One games, and hundreds of back catalog titles, as well as cloud gaming, but it's getting a price increase to $19.99 per month. That's a lot. PC Game Pass is also getting a price increase from $9.99 per month to $11.99 per month. PC Game Pass will also continue to get day one games. Game Pass Core, formerly known as Xbox Live Gold, uh, is getting an annual price increase to $74.99, up from $59.99 previously, but it will remain at $9.99 per month. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Okay. They started off by giving us Xbox Game Pass standard. Yes. Core is worse than that? Is less stuff than that? Core is what Xbox Live Gold used to be. So it's just online multiplayer. It's just online okay. multiplayer. They do give you 25 games. Yeah. Uh, but that basically replaces the two free games a month that they used to do. I'm they shouldn't even do that at all. I know. Honestly. <laughs> they should just get rid of that completely. Uh, the price increases are global. So there's a there's a chart on here. You can see the price the prices for your region. Uh, we're American, so we only care about America. Right. Obviously, we're the greatest right, country right. in the world. Nothing wrong with us over here, uh, unlike you Europeans. Um, but yeah, if this is going to affect you around the world, so it's not just us in the great old U.S. of A., the greatest country in the world. Uh, where was I? I got so patriotic there. Um, users with recurring billing, the new prices will take effect on September 12th, 2024, giving you time to cancel if you don't fancy it. I am going to cancel my Game Pass because I never use it. Yeah. Like, I, I have been on xbox's side for like this whole time because i like the idea of game yeah. pass so much i think it's a great value uh increasing the price is lame uh this structure that they have is lame like i knew i you always knew that they were going to get rid of xbox gold or, or, or xbox live yeah they were going to try to push game pass as much as possible that was always evident mm -hmm. um but they're 
they're ma- they're keeping Xbox Live Gold. They're just calling it something else. Yeah. It. I mean, it, that it, doesn't it, make sense. It it makes sense to have just a basic tier that gives you access to online multiplayer or what? I mean, if they're still going to charge for online multiplayer or what? What games? Whatever games still use online multiplayer. Like- That's what I'm saying. I'm saying <laughs> now most of the games that people want to play online multiplayer are free and right. you don't need gold right. anymore. Like like back in the day when Xbox Live came out and we were paying for yeah. multiplayer, which wasn't a thing, you used to not have to pay to play games on- online. But Xbox right. came out and they were like, hey, you're going to give us money. And we're like, yay. Yeah. I would love to give you money for this mm. thing that used to be free. And on PlayStation, it was free. But on Xbox, we paid for it because we thought it was a better service. Yeah. And I would pay every fucking time because I wanted to play Call of Duty online. Yeah. Now, I only play Warzone, and that's a free game, and mm-hmm. you don't even need to pay them right. to, in order to play it. So, I, I don't need that, because mm-hmm. I don't play any multiplayer games that require it. Uh, and I, I just don't use uh, Game Pass. And, all right, so the core, no, the standard does not have day one games. Yeah. That's insane. So if you want the day one games, which is another reason why I paid for Game Pass. That was its whole selling point. Yeah. If I want that, I need Ultimate. Yeah. Or I guess I could get the PC version? The PC Game Pass, yeah. Yeah, which, would that give me day one? That gives you day one. Yeah, PC Game Pass will continue to get day one games. But PC Game Pass is only on PC. Like, yeah. that's not going to transfer over to if you want to play the game on Xbox. I, I got to say, mostly I'm using Game Pass on PC if, okay. I'm, if I'm using it. Uh, because there's just so many more devices. Yeah. I, I, like, I just like to play games on wacky devices. And yeah. uh, there's a lot more wacky devices that are, are compatible with PC Game Pass. Um, yeah, it's unclear whether or not... They never said day one games... Oh, PC Game Pass will also continue to yeah. get day one games. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean day one games as they are now, where they'll come three days early if you pay more Pro- money? Probably, yeah. Or are they just getting rid of day one games in the standard so that they could stop releasing games? Or No, they wouldn't do that. They would, well, they would never stop releasing games early for a fee. It's funny you say that, because uh, I did see a tweet. I bookmarked it from uh, Imran Khan, game writer. Yes. Uh, he familiar. tweeted, uh, it looks like it's from the... Uh, uh, acquiring of Activision lawsuit or whatnot, he tweeted, I guess you could argue there are other factors driving the price increase, but that's really talking out of both sides of your mouth here. And he, he highlighted uh, from the from the legal briefing, here the acquisition would benefit uh, consumers making Call of Duty available on Microsoft's Game Pass on the day it is released on console with no price increase for the service based Ooh. on the acquisition. So it, it sounds like they did this to try and not seem like they're hiding Call of Duty behind, you know, day one on Game Pass, you know? Oh, because they can't. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Well. they Just, just allow it to be on another service. They completely, like, twisted their premier gaming subscription mm-hmm. in order to buy. Activision, and this is the result of it. Yeah, and they you're, fucked up everything. You're getting a worse service. You know, this is expensive. Twenty dollars a month. Its new price is fucking ridiculous. Yeah. You know, I, I'm paying like seventeen dollars a month for Netflix right now, which is already insane. I'm not gonna spend another twenty on Game Pass. You know, and and now like if I wanted to save money and get the cheaper tier I'm not getting uh, day one games which is the whole selling point of it's the main thing that separated Game Pass from PlayStation Plus you were no one was getting uh, day one games anyway yeah I'm paying $16.99 by the way a month and it renews July uh, 13th okay so I am uh, turning off recurring billing wait is that what I want to do? There's also cancel subscription. Why are there two things? Well, it, that's a good question. Because Game Pass, you pay month to month. I'm going to turn off recurring billing and see what happens. Does, yeah. Now, the only thing I can foresee being a problem here is that in Valorant, mm-hmm. 
You get all of the characters if you link it to Game Pass. Oh, you're going to lose that. So you unlock the characters by playing the game. Okay. But you have to like click on each character and then play the game. So yeah. I'm going to lose some characters. Yes. I have to start unlocking them. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I only played three characters anyway. Um, turn off recurring billing. Bing. Let's see what this does. Who is at Microsoft leaking all of the stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Everything that they're planning on doing yeah. is, is fucked. Goodbye for now. Your subscription will end on uh, July 12th. There you go. Okay. There you go. No more Game Pass. And there's a little lady waving at me. Oh, bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. See you later. Yeah. It, I could always... I'm canceling it because when I need it, I will just pay for it. Yeah. Like, if there's a game coming out, like, if they... What would be the next... Oh. Indiana uh, Jones. Indiana Jones. Yeah. When that comes out, I'll pay for it, and I'll play it. Right. Uh, And that's it. That's all yeah. I can think of. No, there's... Uh, I don't use it otherwise. Yeah. So, uh, According to Microsoft, the vast majority of users today are already on Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which is their flagship plan service. Uh, Game Pass Ultimate incorporates all of, the X- all of the games on Xbox consoles as well as in the cloud and on PC too, often with cross-save and cross-progression. So they, I guess they figure everyone's already just using Ultimate. Yeah. So, we, you know, we, that was inevitably going to get a price increase. So, but now they have all these other, conf- it was already kind of confusing. It wasn't as bad as like other services, but like now it just makes it more confusing because they keep changing it, you know, and yeah. they keep changing it for the worse. I would imagine, I mean, this isn't happening until September and I'd yeah. imagine that they would have a press release that would make a little more. No, you know what? I take it back. Microsoft is notorious for. Uh, not being very yeah. consumer friendly in their messaging. You have the Xbox One. You have the Xbox Series yeah. X and S, an Xbox One S, an Xbox Series X. Mm-hmm. We were talking to our friends the other day, and I legitimately couldn't understand which Xbox he had. <laughs> um. All right. Uh, we got ten dollars from Clint Thurman, who says, "Thanks for all the entertainment. Keep it up." One of the few podcasts I listen to weekly. Oh my god! Thank oh, thank you. So you. Much. Uh, next news. We're done, right? We could. Yeah, we're on. done. Uh, I just put this in real quick because I want to mention this. This is about Ambernick. Some shit has gone down. Oh Their yeah. New RG forty XX. Okay, walk me through this. Okay. Their new device, the RG forty XX. I think it's called. No, this is 35XX. I don't know. And Bernick has a bunch of consoles. They're, they're the emulation guys, the yes. emulation handheld guys. Yes. All of their consoles, if you buy them from Ambernick, uh, I'm pretty sure all of them come with games on them. Uh, I don't like that. In my video about this device, I will talk more about that. But uh, I wish that they didn't come with games because yeah. uh, we can very easily just put the games on them ourselves. I think that including games in the purchase that you know they're not paying licensing fees for mm-hmm. uh, is a great way to ruin the whole industry. Yeah, you're you're making emulation more synonymous with piracy, and uh, you're gonna get sued, and it's gonna go downhill for everybody. Right. Uh, they kind of got a pass. All these emulation companies kind of got a pass because these games are old. Yeah, and a lot of these games are unavailable. So, people kind of just turned a blind eye to it. Yeah. Uh, turns out, uh, the firmware. So, so you can download the stock firmware for all of their devices. Yeah. And the firmware now just comes with all of the games. So you mm-hmm. can go to Amber Nick's website and just fucking download games. Yeah. It's like kind of really bad. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you would unpack it from the firmware without having a device, but still. Uh, it was found on their, uh, website. I think it was the firmware for the 40 XX. Um, yeah, this is what I found. This is a tweet by Joey's retro handhelds. Ambernick is now including actual ports of modern games in the latest update. Uh, this is for the RG 35 XX H, which is not one that I, that I've messed with. Right. Uh, ports running using Portmaster. This is not a good thing at all. 
Uh, so there are ports of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, uh, Celeste, and Grand Theft Auto 3, and uh, Stardew, Stardew Valley. Valley. Yeah, That's four different games that are modern games that are available currently on, base on a lot of devices. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're just pirating them and, give, and selling them themselves, mm -hmm. which is fucked up. So Portmaster is a way that you can get uh, Linux games to run on these handhelds. So you get like the Linux version from your Steam library yeah. or something, and you can, you can put it on these handhelds. Uh, so this is Ambernick's way of sort of showing off how you can do this, but yeah. it, in doing that, they just straight up are giving it to people. So uh, that was a little bit of a controversy because I saw that and I was like, that's not good. I don't like yeah. how they're they're doing this, especially with modern consoles. This is how you're going to ruin the industry for everybody. Today, I randomly got an email mm -hmm. because they're sending me the new one, the four or whatever. Yeah. And randomly, they just emailed me and said, by the way, uh, note that these three games, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shovel Knight, and Celeste, I actually didn't realize that Shovel Knight was part of it, uh, are only available in the review samples, and the actual shipped machines do not have these three games. Therefore, there is no need to display them during your review videos. Thank you. So I was like, okay, apparently it's only in the review samples. Yeah. Uh, and then Joey's Retro Handheld responded and said, yeah, that's rich, given that they have this showing to contact them for the firmware, and they have this showing that GTA and Stardew are in the games list. So... They're full of shit. Like th th yeah. this, what might end up making it to retail units. Also, Joey brings up a good point. Uh, they recently lied about the uh, RG Cube that they released. Yeah, the screen was broken, and they said, "Oh, that's only for reviewers. We sent them bad units." But also, a bunch of uh, consumers who bought the console had bad faulty yeah. units too. Uh, and that wasn't the only time they've lied. Somebody else said brought up some other cases. Um, so they're not very trustworthy no. so I also don't understand why they say uh, these three games are only available in the review sample therefore there is no need to display them in your review that was another thing people were commenting on like uh, why send them then in the first yeah. place this seems like I mean they could argue that this is a way to just show off that you can port games mm -hmm. and they just it's easy. I won't have to do it myself because I wouldn't have. Uh, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't have put Celeste on my. Um, I, I probably wouldn't have gone through the trouble of porting it. I think for Celeste specifically, you need like the humble bundle version or something yeah. weird. Um, but I don't believe them. I think that uh, th this is going to go down very badly for a lot of for for everybody. Yeah. This is good. they're they're flying too close to the sun. They're taking oh, too away too much. I absolutely. mean, they're a Chinese company, so they're able to get away with a lot of skirting IP laws and stuff. But something's going to go down and it's going to be really bad. Uh especially taking modern games like this. Mhm. Mm so that's that. Uh, we'll see when the uh, system comes out and what people get in their hands. I'd imagine that they are probably going to get some of these games, but uh, I'll talk more about it in a video uh, when I do get this in my hand mm -hmm. and start playing with it. Anyway. Uh, Stardy says, they were in the 64 gigabyte firmware download, not the 16 gigabyte download. They took down the 64 gigabyte version a few days ago, but it's still widely circulated. Oh, so it's not on their site anymore. I mean, Joey Retro Handheld seems to think that it was still on their site. Oh, you know what? What probably happened was this was going to be in the retail release. They mm -hmm. got caught, and now they're they're backstepping. Right. Probably too late, though. If they have a bunch of batches, it's yeah. probably going to end up in the first batch. Hey guys, breaking news. Xbox just increased the price of Game Pass again. You should rewind the yeah. YouTube stream about 20 minutes. Because, oh boy, howdy. Just finished getting into that. All right. Uh, Razzle Jazzle, thanks for the 45 months. Let's plow through the rest of this okay. nonsense. We got Dragon Age difficulty setting. Oh yeah, I, I thought this was interesting. Developer Bioware has revealed uh, more about the latest installment in uh, the Dragon Age series, Dragon Age uh, Veilguard. Uh, 
features like hundreds of character customization sliders and pronoun options separate uh from your character's gender live up to the game uh director connie uh, bruce's promise that dragon age the vilgard was created with inclusivity in mind uh this desire was carried over to the difficulty options which include standard choices like story focus storyteller path a balanced adventurer mode or more crushing nightmare mode which can't be changed uh once the playthrough has started uh where bioware's latest uh, is getting interesting in this regard is its unbound difficulty mode this option is said to allow players to tailor their dragon age adventure as they are uh as they please with a variety of tweakable settings some highlights include the ability to adjust uh how wayfinding guides um the experience aim assist an auto aim option and wider or narrower parrying windows enemy and player damage can also be fine-tuned as uh as can enemy pressure uh but the real game changer might be the option to turn off death for your character entirely these are all options meant to make dragon age the veil guard more inviting uh for every kind of game fan none of these options are a cheat uh bush explained um it's a it's an option to make sure players of all abilities can show up. I mean, if you turn them all on, <laughs> they're cheats. Uh, no death. That's <sighs> a cheat. That's literally what it what cheats used to be. You would pull True. up a cheat window. True. I'm not saying they shouldn't do it because yeah. they literally had them in games back in the day. It's different. We, we literally would play Doom and type in god well, mode and then just have god i mode. think it's a little different because they are giving you this option from the start and they're advertising it they want you to be aware of this as a feature back in the day when we used to do cheat codes they were secrets we had to look for them we had to hunt for them this was before the internet so we had to look in magazines or go to a friend's house and the friend had to know what the cheats were so it's a i would say it's a little different than that i've always said that like I don't mind like rewind features in uh, Switch Online because if they're giving you the ability to use it, mm -hmm. that means it's a it becomes a gameplay feature, you know, not a cheat necessarily. So I'm thinking about it in terms of like, uh, I mean, when you're playing a game, there are no rules. You play it however you want to play. Yeah, it. and that's the end of the story. Yeah, you play it however you want to play it. But people who like speed run games, there are parameters. Yeah, and uh for example just rewinding the fucking game probably isn't gonna count <laughs> no, as we yeah. run. uh and the same thing would uh happen here like you can't just just freaking widen the parrying window if you're gonna speed run dragon age that would be a completely different category well again this is one mode of four yeah so there's storyteller difficulty there's adventure difficulty there's nightmare oh, difficulty so it's a whole difficulty yeah okay. it's a whole other tier okay that's completely different. yeah so there's nightmare mode which is i'm sure it's all you dark souls fans and elden ring fans where you can just play the game and like show off like how good you are even though you can't play, beat shadow of the Erd tree you <laughs> fucking losers um when you're speed running, there are different categories for different difficulties. Yeah. So having unbound difficulty yeah, this would is be completely like, different. Uh, the unbound difficulty, which is what we're talking about here with like all the sliders and stuff, this is for the most casual fans. This is for someone like me who doesn't have a lot of time anymore to like play games like this. Yeah. So I can just turn off death, make the enemies one hit kills, and just plow through the game at my leisure. And some people, I think, just want the story. Yeah. It's a Bioware game. So yeah. I, I understand. I don't. I don't really have any strong opinions anymore. If it's a completely different difficulty, it's totally yeah. fine. Uh, so yeah, I think it is cool, and I think more game. Not necessarily like the option to not die in the game, but I think more. If more games have the ability to like tailor the difficulty to your needs, like yeah, yeah. So what do you think? There was a controversy the other day about how Elden Ring does not have a pause button. Yeah, I think that's dumb. Yeah, that I think I, I, you know, and I, I watched Alana Pierce's video on it. I didn't watch the video. I uh, just saw her tweet and everybody was making it. I actually only saw the tweet and saw other people talking about how there was a big stink about it. But well, because really the big stink was she had, she had uh, said that people with children, hey, hi, me, hello, uh, are considered to have a situational disability. Yeah. Not disabled in the way like, you know, you're stuck in a wheelchair or whatever. You're in a like, particular situation where, where you have to pause. Where you're unable to do a task yeah. because of your situation. Yeah. And I have a perfect story for that. The other day, my one of my kids was watching TV. 
I'm sitting on the couch next to them. I'm playing uh, American Arcadia on my Steam Deck, and my child pees on the couch. <laughs> now, if I was playing Elden Ring, I would not be able to pause the game yeah. and help my child. I would have to put the game down, screw up my progress. Either have to screw up my progress in the game or let my kid sit and pee. You know, American Arcadia. I mean, it depends on how far you are. Elden American Ring. Arcadia has a pause button, so I can pause, pick them up, and bring them to the bathroom. You know, that's that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So I look, I know my limits. I'm I'm not gonna play Elden Ring because I'm I'm not good at games. <laughs> so like I'm I i do not have the patience for that. But like things like that, like little things here and there that just make the game like more accessible to more people. Yes, it's it's online, but like the online mode kind of doesn't matter. Like in a way, like you just a pause button would not break the game. My instinct now if i'm playing a console game instead of hitting the pause button i hit the home button see that doesn't always work though for every game it should work if a pause button works then the home button should definitely work. but it doesn't work for every game because like if it's an online game yeah. it might just kick you out of the game entirely so i don't know how it would work in Elden Ring. yeah that would just be my go-to because it also usually works even in cutscenes. yeah you just hit the home button and it'll pause the cutscene so it, it's it depends on the game so I heard that uh, I saw RGT had some tweet. He was like, "Um, obviously you go in, you hit the start button, and you go into the tutorial menu, and you go to a random tutorial, and that freezes your game." No. Obviously, I knew that from the very beginning, and it's like, "How do you know that?" All right, a, how do you know that? And B, that's not intuitive. Like, no, that's it's not too many steps but to I, pause the game. I think his point was that it's available in the game so it should be the pause button should pause the game there's no reason why the pause button shouldn't pause the game yeah is what he's saying that it's it's a feature in the game you just have to dig a little deeper so right. why not just make it in the game yeah and i agree with this point um yeah there needs to be uh some more quality of life around around that because my life should not revolve around the game that i'm yeah. playing uh, there's other stuff too, like certain online games, like with Valorant. Uh, you have to uh, you have to play the whole, the games are like 45 minutes long, mm -hmm. and uh, you you're locked once you hit play, you're locked in. And people yeah. are like, you know, if you're playing with like other people, a lot of times, um, I gotta get up for school in the morning. Can we make this quick? Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. <laughs> On console, can't you just press the home button and go back to the PS slash Xbox home screen that pauses it? That's what I said. Yeah. I literally just said that. But you're the one who's played Elden Ring. Well, you yeah. play, he plays it on PC, though. People are saying... Uh, How does it work on the Steam Deck? Yeah. People are saying YouTube, oh, says, but like... Oh, sorry. No, he said, can't you just press... Yeah. I don't think that pauses it. It's a snake eater. Try it on your Steam Deck. See if it works. People on YouTube are saying, like, you know, situational disability is a weird way of putting it, uh, and there should it, be a better... It, it is. And, like, to her credit, Alana Pierce, so, like, does mention that. They're getting fucking triggered by the word disability. <laughs> it's true. Disability does not, like I said, it doesn't mean like, you know, physical disability, There's like stuck in a wheelchair. There's nothing wrong with that. This, like, when you go into your phone settings and you change it from, you know, silent mode to, like, sound mode, you are disabling the sound mode. Yep. Like, that's what it, that, like, it's in that context. You're in a situation that is disabling you from playing the game. Yes. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. On, on a fundamental level, there's nothing wrong with saying with that. No, these phrasing. are fucking snowflakes who are too, <laughs> do get triggered by, by words, by mere words. Uh, these so people yeah. have never heard of a handicap in games like in Smash Brothers or freaking golf. That's yeah, a good point. True. That's true. It's a temporary debuff. All right. That's actually a, gr a great way of putting it. Yeah. Um,. Virang with 10 bucks. Hey, Bob and Will. Bob, it was nice seeing you at Too Many Games. I was too starstruck to say that you inspired me to my... Oh, my God. Thank you so much. I have modded my Vita 3DS and Wii U. Thank you. Hope I wasn't too awkward. You were not. I think I remember you. Didn't... I, I think we had a full conversation, didn't we? <laughs> uh, all right. Anyway. More news. Yes. Uh, What's oh, next? yeah, baby. Japanese Sonic Cross Shadow Generations website teases fourth character. Currently, the website shows off Sonic, Classic Sonic, Shadow, and a blank square on silver. the website. It's going to be silver. Uh, with coming soon under it. The placement of the image and the color scheme of the teaser appears to suggest that it will be a previously unseen variant of Shadow. 
Uh, Sonic X Shadow Generations will release on October 25th for PS5, Xbox Series X and S, Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Uh, uh, the PS4 and PS5 versions will include uh, an exclusive extended prologue animations with deleted scenes. Oh, so we think it's a variation of Shadow. Uh, cl- um, classic Shadow, I guess. Whatever that might look like. He hasn't changed. Much. He doesn't have a classic variation. <laughs> Unless it's like, oh, wait, isn't there like a pre order bonus or something where they have the Sonic R Sonic model? Yeah. Maybe they do something like that. Like that they would give be him cool. like a low poly. Yeah. Like- but, but that's like a, a skin. These are like Sonic, classic Sonic, and Shadow are like characters uh, in the game. Okay. So, what? Who is a character that's. Like Shadow, the only other one I can think of is Silver. Yeah, which is why I'm thinking it's they somehow found a way to do like a Genesis style, Genesis era version of Shadow. You know, like a baby, <laughs> like a little, well, little like, baby Shadow. Because <laughs> like Son, you got Modern Sonic yeah. is like you know the Dreamcast era, and then Classic Sonic is like the Genesis era. Mm-hmm. So maybe they fe- they like did like a Genesis era Shadow the Hedgehog. Yeah, they would have to make one. That'd be yeah. weird. Also, I was thinking about this. I don't know how much we want to get into this. Oh, boy. Uh, so, Shadow the Hedgehog. Yes. The ultimate life form. Yes. Based off of Sonic? Was he? Because Dr. Robotnik's grandfather made him, right? Yes, Gerald Robotnik. Yeah, so like he was made like forever ago. Yes. Before Sonic. Yes. So is he a clone of Sonic or not? No, he's not a clone of Sonic. Okay, I just made that up. You're then. gonna you're gonna make me look up his biography, and I know that's gonna be a so disaster. you mean to tell me that they just so happened to make a really fast hedgehog before <laughs> the really fast hedgehog existed? Yes. <laughs> Uh, like, like there wasn't like a really fast hedgehog before Sonic, right? In I'm this- assuming in this universe. <laughs> Is hedgehog. there always a really fast hedgehog? Hedgehogs are just really fast. Okay. You know? Uh, we don't really see Amy run a whole lot, but I'm assuming she is very fast. So so Shadow had to be based off of something. Within the Sonic series fictional universe, Shadow the Hedgehog was created by Gerald Robotnik through genetic engineering as part of an experiment to cure his granddaughter, Maria, from a deadly illness. While Shadow and Maria formed a strong bond, the government deemed him a threat. Shadow was... <laughs> <laughs> it's suspended animation and a military organization the the guardian units of nations or gun killed maria as shadow tried to protect her maria's death traumatized shadow who vowed to keep his promise to her uh that he would protect the world from danger in sonic adventure 2 gerald's grandson dr eggman uh learns of shadow and revives him as part of a plan to conquer the world and defeat sonic the hedgehog revives she, him yeah because okay. he was stuck in suspended animation okay yes so there's nothing here about, you know, why he, uh, why he's a hedgehog. Why he's a hedgehog. Yeah. Yeah. When, so, so that, there has to, he, he's been created, yes. right? Yes. So who, how did the <laughs> grandfather get the idea of a really fast hedgehog that just so happens to be almost identical to a hedgehog that comes Decades later. I don't, I, I wish I knew. <laughs> so that means that there's room. There's, now I'm becoming one of the Sonic guys. Oh, God. That means that there's room in the lore for Sonic's like grandfather to also be a really fast hedgehog yes. that goes on adventures and stuff. I hope you never read like an Archie comic Sonic. I have! Because like, it's just going to make you like it's just gonna your brain is gonna like collapse on itself. i have and it did <laughs> and that's why i am the way that i am <laughs> all right uh anyway uh hey let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about what makes you crazy <laughs> suicide squad kills the justice everyone's League. favorite game rocksteady rocksteady studios is delaying the release of suicide squad season two days before the new content was set to go live uh s- update uh we will be adjusting the release timing uh, for the next season uh season two will now launch on july 25th thank you for your patience uh f- the second season of suicide squad kill the justice League will introduce mr freeze as a playable character in addition to a new map mrs freeze 
Mrs. Mrs. Freeze. Have you not seen this? No. It's Mrs. Freeze. Oh, sorry. I gave up on this game before it launched. I, I don't think it's clear who she is. Right. Well, because the Joker in the game is like an alternate dimension Joker. Yeah, I think they, so, they think this is an alternate dimension, Mr. Oh, uh, yeah, this is definitely, it's definitely got to be. Is it Nora? Oh. I saw a video that said it's probably not Nora. Okay. But it could be. Okay. But it could be. It, it's probably an ultimate, alternate universe, Mr. Freeze, where Mr. Freeze is just a girl. Okay. And then Nora is just a dude. So it would be like... Instead or of, Nora's not a dude. It's it's like Victor instead of Victor Freeze is Victoria Freeze, and then instead of yes. Nora, it's Norman. I I think that there was in Elseworld Mrs. Freeze where it was just that, but mm -hmm. it was like one random yeah panel in a comic. I don't know. This, uh, this is the second of a planned four episodes. So maybe that maybe that'll turn the game around. This is gonna get canceled. Oh my god! There's no way this, they're doing this four game episodes. is yeah. There it is. They're not going to do all four, and fucking Rocksteady's going to get shut down, and Warner Brothers is going to be like, oh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Nintendo officially done repairing. Done? Done. I th I misread this, and I thought it meant they are going to start nope. <laughs> repairing them. Because Last there's issues right now yeah. where uh, a lot of them are just dead. Last year in May, Nintendo's Japanese support service revealed it would be ending repairs of the Wii U when its current parts inventory ran out. Now, in an update just over a year later on its website, it's announced uh, the service for the system, originally released in 2012, has officially ended. Here's a rough translation explaining how it's run out of the replacement parts necessary to repair the consoles, uh, with the company now no longer accepting repairs this week um, as of July 3rd. Um, this includes Wii U peripherals. You can see on Nintendo's official website the uh, many other systems it's no longer accepting repairs for, which covers its past generation products. Uh, Nintendo called time on its Wii U repair service in North America and elsewhere years ago, so nothing has changed locally. This follows the Japanese video game giant also shutting down online services for Wii U as well as the 3DS earlier this year, uh, marking the end of both of these console generations. So, yeah, that's it. It's done. No more. We use dead. Sorry. <laughs> Recently, what was it? Two years ago, uh, it was discovered that there was a chip in the Wii U that yes. just deteriorates on a lot of Wii U's, mm -hmm. and uh, it became uh very. I think it was just like a like a RAM, something with the RAM that yeah. that held NAND NAND sounds yes. sounds about right. Something in there that uh. Lost its memory and deteriorated, yeah. uh, and it it kind of bricked a lot of consoles and became a huge pain in the ass to uh, to fix. Um, ours didn't have that issue. Uh, I w that's why I thought this article was going to talk about how they're going to fix that, but uh, it looks yeah. like no. So this is really bad for yeah, especially for those people because there's going to be an influx of people who have Wii U's that just don't yeah, it's on. it's the the NAND processor, the NAND yeah. Flash, yes. yeah. All right, anyway, uh, GTA 5 story DLC canceled? Yes. Uh, Rockstar Games shelved various GTA 5 expansions because of the massive sudden success of GTA Online, one former developer claims. Last year, data miners found evidence suggesting that three different DLC packs were in development for GTA 5, possibly called Asian Trevor, Alien, uh, Alien Invasion, uh, teased everywhere in the base game, and Zombie Apocalypse, which could probably echo Red Dead Redemption's excellent um, Undead Nightmare. Steve Ogg, who portrayed Dangerous Wildcard Trevor in the game, recently confirmed that a James Bond Trevor DLC was indeed in development at one point before the studio abruptly scrapped it. Um, we now know what to blame for the sudden disappearance, the bonkers success of GTA Online. Former Rockstar Games developer James Rubino um, who was one of the main editors, cameras, artists, and did a lot of the second unit on stage stuff for six years, told YouTube channel um, Santa Play uh, about his time on the Agent Trevor DLC. We split our teams into two, uh, so I stayed on GTA Online, and then this DLC, which Steven Ogg was a very important part of, and then some of the team overlapped and went to uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 early on. Uh, Rubino then explained that after GTA Online came out, it was so much of a cash cow and people were loving it so much that it was hard to make an argument that a standalone DLC would outcompete that. 
I think looking back now, I would say that you could probably do both and that and that was a business decision that they made. Yeah, I would imagine like I liked the idea of GTA Online, but I never played much of it. Yeah. I would have maybe played a Trevor DLC. Because that's yeah, really I think cool. any like you know sort of single player DLC would have been successful, and then it's, that would have got me to maybe play Grand Theft Auto Online. Yeah, it's Grand Theft Auto Five. It's the most successful Grand Theft Auto game they've ever made. Yeah. You know, a, it's known as a single player game. People will buy a single player campaign for Grand Theft Auto, well, even well, if it's not to the level of people buying multiplayer stuff. Yeah, the online, the people playing online are gonna keep playing online. Yeah. I don't think doing they already started doing it. So yeah. like how uh, much more would it have taken to finish it? According to this article, uh it didn't burn all of that work in the scrapyard. A lot of stuff did end up making it into later iterations of GTA Online. So it's not like they wasted it. It was really, really good. So they did incorporate some of that stuff into GTA Online. But like imagine like a whole single player campaign where like Trevor of all people is like supposed to be like a suave spy. Like that would have been yeah, fun. They, they did. Uh, they had a lot of story DLCs for the other Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, for GTA Four they did too. Yeah. And then Red Dead Redemption had Undead Nightmare, which was fantastic. Yeah, so, they milked those. Yeah. And uh, there was nothing for Grand Theft Auto Five. Yeah, because everything went into the online. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Not everybody wants to play online. I that's know. why I think they could. They could have stand to have made a lot. Yeah. If they. If they coax people back into yeah. the game years later anyway uh nintendo pledges action over uncomfortable fan art oh no yeah. are they gonna come after me <laughs> again N uh nintendo has responded to concerns over inappropriate use of its characters online and said it would take appropriate action against anything that would make some players feel uncomfortable President Shintaro Furukawa was recently questioned by a shareholder who said they had come across cases on social media where Nintendo IP and games were used inappropriately. This inappropriate use of Nintendo's characters poses the risk of damaging the company's brand. The question continued, so what, uh, so what was Nintendo planning to do about it? In response, Furukawa said Nintendo management policy was to bring smiles through entertainment, but presumably not the kind of smiles generated by inappropriate use. Uh, quote, I will refrain from commenting on individual cases, but we believe that appropriate action must be taken against any behavior that undermines this policy. Uh, our goal is to create an entertain. Our goal is to create an environment where everyone can enjoy playing games. We will continue to make every effort to ensure that our customers are not made to feel uncomfortable, not only in our games but also anywhere they come into contact with our IP. Of course, fans have been using Nintendo characters for inappropriate reasons for a very, very long time. The most high-profile example of this in recent memory was a, was a certain Bowsette, a mm -hmm. spicy fan mashup of Peach and Bowser that Nintendo initially refused to comment on when it went viral and trended on social media worldwide and then later ruled as non-canon. So uh, at the top of the article, there's an update. Yes. Uh, apparently, the question was posed to them uh, specifically uh, mentioning uh, a Mario cosplayer in Japan accused of sending lewd images to minors alongside. Uh, oh, and, and then and then Nintendo seems to have removed that question. They still oh. left the answer, but they censored the question. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah, so. They don't want any. They don't want to give part them any, any. Yeah, yeah, they don't want any part of this, uh, this Got situation. It. Um, okay. That seems way different. Uh, yeah, because, that's because like you're talking about fan art. Yeah, but this is a cosplayer committing a crime. Committing a crime. <laughs> yeah, that's why would Nintendo even want to have anything like why even ask them about that i guess clearly maybe they had the, nothing to do with maybe that. the shareholder thought because the cosplayer was dressing up as a nintendo character what do you want him to sue all cosplayers now Nin well no but like nintendo would have some sort of power to stop them with the power of like ip lawyers you know yeah but like, that would require stopping all cosplayers not all cosplayers what are you gonna do vet all of them are you gonna message underage people <laughs> if you put on a mario hat we gotta figure out if this guy's gonna be creepy. i mean this is not a one-to-one -one comparison but like you know disney has sued 
can uh preschools for pat for painting mickey mouse on the window not yeah. every preschool but like I'm, I'm i don't think nintendo is above that yeah that's why i just think the question is weird yeah like literally the only other alternative is stopping people from using dressing up as mario at all you know well i think it's pretty you know in certain cases like that, it's pretty obvious what they can do. Like that one particular case that Nintendo could probably like help and stop. You know, they wouldn't stop everybody from dressing up as Mario. They can't. You know. Oh, you mean like finding out he did something bad, then coming after him yes. after the fact and be like, "You can't use yeah. our IP because you did something bad." Yes, I understand. Uh, next news: Apple accepts Epic's EU App Store. That's a big deal. Were they forced to? Uh, f- I believe so. Update. Uh, let me just re- start the actual article. Um, Epic says that Apple has once again rejected its submission for a third-party app store. The company has says that Apple rejected its latest submission over the design and position of the install button on the app store, claiming it claiming that it too closely resembles Apple's own get button. Uh, Apple also allegedly said that Epic's in-app purchases label is too similar to its own label used for the same reason. There's a tweet. Let's read the tweet. Okay. Epic Games Newsroom tweeted, Apple has rejected our Epic Game Store notarization submission twice now, claiming the design and position of Epic's install button is too similar to Apple's get button and that our in-app purchases label is too similar to the App Store's in-app purchases label. Uh, and it goes on to say, we are using the same install and in-app purchases naming convention that are used across popular app stores on multiple platforms and are following standard conventions for buttons in iOS apps. We're just trying to build a store that mobile users can easily understand. And the disclosure of in-app purchases is a regulatory best practice followed by all stores nowadays. Uh, that is... Apple kind of expects you to use some of their UI. Yeah. Uh, so that's probably what's happening here. Apple rejected Apple's rejection is arbitrary, obst- obstructive, and in violation of the DMA. What is that? Uh, I should know this. Digital Millennium Act? No. It's the European thing. And we've shared our concerns with the European Commission. Barring further roadblocks from Apple. Digital re- Markets Act. We remain ready to launch the Epic Game Store and Fortnite on iOS in the EU in the next couple of months. So it that was of as of July fifth, so just a couple of days ago. Yeah. So Apple was trying to put up some roadblocks even after they were being forced to allow yes. the Epic Game Store. And now in an, the update reads, the same day it posted the tweet thread about Apple's submission process, Epic now says its game store has been approved. Uh, the company offered no further comment commentary beyond a single tweet noting that Apple has informed us that our previously rejected Epic Game Store notarization submission has now been accepted. 30 minutes later, Epic CEO and friend of the show, because he liked the tweet of mine one time, Tim Sweeney, uh, said Apple is now telling reporters that this approval is temporary and are demanding we change the buttons in the next version, which would make our store less standard and harder to use. We'll fight this. Guess the saga's got more legs to run. That is, yeah, petty. That's, yeah, that's very petty. That's uh, It could have been like an automatic thing that it got yeah. rejected, but they should be really looking at the Epic Game Store because Epic is going to create some massive problems for them. Yeah, I'm sure... They are literally just throwing roadblocks specifically for Epic. If yeah. we wanted to create an app store for Europe, I'm sure they'd be like, yeah, no problem. Here you go. But yeah. because it's Epic, it's like, oh, we are fucking fighting this. Yeah, it should be the opposite. Yeah. It should be, they should they should be letting Epic do mm-hmm. whatever they want because Epic is going to create massive problems. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, that's the way you get things done. Yeah. Uh, is you become a big company and give another big company a lot of problems. Yes. And then, and then laws get passed. Mm-hmm. Uh, last news, City Skylines 2's console version. Goodbye. City Skylines 2, the follow-up to the popular city builder developed by Colossal Order, just can't catch a break. Following a post by the official City Skylines account on publisher Paradox Interactive's forum, the console release for City Skylines 2 has been postponed indefinitely. The game was originally targeting a launch on Xbox and PlayStation sometime in October. Well, 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Holy Ooh, shit. Oh, oh boy. While we are making slow but steady progress, there are still unresolved issues impacting the game in ways that harm the player experience that we want to deliver. Uh, we expect to receive a new release candidate, which will undergo a thorough review in August. This evaluation will determine whether we can bring the submission process and provide a solid release date or if further issues need to be addressed, the post reads. Despite Paradox Interactive publishing multiple pieces of downloadable content for the game, City Skylines 2 has been plagued with performance and stability issues uh, since its PC launch in October of last year, prompting an apology from the developers in April. The prompt can't... Uh, the prompt cancelization of the Sims competitor Life by You following an indefinite delay doesn't inspire much confidence in Paradox's intention to deliver on this promised release. Colossal Order has managed to hit all of its goals outlined in the publicly available Year 1 roadmap for uh, Skylines 2. However, persistent issues and lack of mod support have left players clinging to the original City Skylines for the time being. So, they're not having a good time over there. Uh, for making City Skylines 2. The PC release was bad. Um, they're trying to fix it, and now development on the console version has hit a, enough snags that they have to indefinitely delay the release of it. How well did it do? Because the first one was immensely popular. Yes. I don't know if the second one was. I don't think it was. I know I know it didn't review well. Oh, that'll be the end of that then. It, it didn't review well. Uh, fans don't like it. And yeah, okay. So I don't know. I this I think this could be the end of City Skylines, which stinks because like the first game came out like around the same time as EA's last Sim City game, and that game was hot fire. Sim yeah, City. Yeah, people really wanted a modern Sim City game, yeah. and that was it. City Skylines was it. For yeah. Them. And uh, I, I, was there a need for a two? I don't think so. I mean, there have been five Sim City games. You know, slowly... yeah, there need to be five SimCity games. Well, like they slowly <laughs> think add that things might here be and there. Why the, yeah, the, 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 there's no SimCity games anymore. Well, no, there's no SimCity games anymore because EA released the last one with that required always online, and the day it launched, the servers were down, and they were like, "I don't know what EA, happened." EA turns out uh, is bad. Yeah. All right, here you go. This is just a guy punching sunflowers. <laughs> Plants vs. Zombies. Uh, that's funny. Funny. <laughs> funny. <laughs> One of them got sent into the sun. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, we're going to talk to you guys right now. Yes. Let's start with people who have comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Wrong thing. Uh, Rusty Crab? Kretsu Kirby is the guy's name. Yeah. Hey, Bob, I passed by you and Wood while you were taking pictures on the sidewalk at Too Many Games. I was thinking about getting a picture with you both, but I didn't want to extend extend the line while you were standing there in the stifling heat. Well, I appreciate that. It was very hot. We were, uh, so we did a signing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we were only in the room for an hour, and then the spawn cast had to have the room, <laughs> so we had to move the whole line, uh, yeah. and we decided to just do it outside, which was probably a bad idea, but we had nowhere else to go. Uh, and then the spawn cast also had to move their stuff outside because <laughs> their line was also too long. Um, next year, hopefully, uh, there'll be enough time i think the last year the line was also two hours but yeah. we did it inside I, I don't know why they only gave us the room for an hour but thank you i appreciate it uh chris <coughs> says the point of the summer sale is to buy games throw them into your backlog and hopefully play it eventually treat y'all self kings also will go buy witcher 3 <laughs> you'll play it eventually we have it you have it on ps4 okay yeah i want to play it on the toilet you don't. Okay. I'm telling you right now. I'm I just surprised how many games. Usually, we, when we did the backlog as like a real show, yeah. there were a lot of games we never played. Yeah. And we haven't had a game we haven't played in a while. Yeah, I don't think so. No. Uh, I also just spent $50 on windshield wipers today. So I don't really know if I should be buying that makes sense. right now. $50. 
For all three, I had to replace. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And get this, I, le I learned something today. I I went to AutoZone. I bought the windshield wipers. I put the windshield wipers on in the parking lot of AutoZone because that's what real men do. They fix their car in the parking lot of the auto shop. <laughs> that must suck having an establishment next to AutoZone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to put the back one on. And I'm having trouble with it. And an AutoZone guy comes out and goes, need help? I'm like, yeah, I don't know what the hell the problem is. It's the right size. And he's looking at it. We go in and like, he goes to the computer guy. He goes, what's the, what's the windshield wiper she get for the rear? And he goes, oh, it needs a 12B. And apparently I bought a 12A. I didn't know that windshield wipers come in different varieties other than the size. I didn't know they were now adding letters oh, to it. Oh, I understand. Oh, it's probably the connection. Yeah, it's the connection. Did you talk to the guy and say, I need wipers for this car, or did you do it on your own? I did it on my own. Nah, that's a problem. Because, like, if I got it for the front windshield wipers, you know what they do? They give me little stupid attachments that I always wind up throwing out because I never need them. Back windshield wipers apparently don't do that. You just have to know to buy either A or B or C. They go all the way up to M. Here's the real problem. You don't want to talk to an AutoZone employee because the last time I talked to an AutoZone employee, he casually dropped the N-word on me <laughs> and he was a white man. And that's why you don't ask these AutoZone employees for any help ever. Okay. And then he looked at me like this. <laughs> like I was going to join him in the, in the festivities. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, get me the fuck out of here yeah. right now. Oh, my God. I never want to come back. Oh, jeez Louise. You know what I was doing there? I was buying a fucking tow rope to rip the safe out of Pacini's house <laughs> with the car. Anyway. Jeez. Good so, time. AutoZone cars. Cars. sponsor us. <laughs> Matthew Cantrell, thank you. I don't know why I'm thank you. My PS2 game was Gundam Journey to... Jaboro? Now that's a PS2 game. I don't remember that game. I th uh, what, did we? What, what, we we were about? talking about like I saw a tweet that said like every every guy has that one PS2 game that like oh yeah only they play or whatever. Oh uh, uh, yeah, I've never heard of that game before. Yeah, exactly, because like there's I like, know there's a million Gundam yeah, games. There's a million PS2 games. So Eric says, "Will I have a comic book question for you?" Okay, I've recently been reading some of image and boom studios new stuff and it's all been pretty good one what have you been reading you want all of the questions now yeah just uh two is it worth it for me to get into spawn <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna answer that no no <laughs> three thoughts on buying digital comics all right one uh I'm, I want to start reading the new DC event, Absolute Power. It looks really interesting. I kind of like the idea of it. Uh, I have really been enjoying uh, Tom King's Wonder Woman run. Uh, I am really enjoying the new G.I. Joe comics that Skybound has been putting out. Those have been really good. Uh, I just finished uh, Boom Studios Power Rangers The Return, which was written by Amy Jo Johnson, the original Pink Ranger. That Ooh. was excellent. Um, is it worth getting into Spawn? Short answer, no. Long answer, I read like the first collection of it. There's some good Spawn stories in it, but like you got to be a real fucking 90s bro if you want to read all 300 issues of Spawn. And there are peaks and valleys, and the peaks aren't that high, and the valleys are really low. Um, thoughts on buying digital comics? That's how I buy most of my comics. It's really easy to do. You just go to comicsology.com. It redirects you to Amazon's Kindle store because fuck everything. And then you just uh, you buy them individually. You can even subscribe to them so they just go show right up on your iPad. So, yeah. Proponent of that. KH Freak says, I mounted a strong MagSafe bagger to a flat slab of a Joy-Con mount. It works great for the vertical positioning. A great experience with DS emulation. All copies that I legally own and ripped myself. Yeah. I don't believe that last part. But what a great time for me to drop a, a video about uh, doing just that. Yeah. It seems like a lot easier than people think. Just you buy a little MagSafe plate, you just fashion it onto something. Yeah. Matt says, The Dump Den Dumpcast. I'm going to start a petition to rename the show that. Now we're in the chat. Fake Wolf Den fan in the, in the Twitch chat says, Will, are you reading Rook Exodus? Uh, no, that is one of Jeff Johns's new image books. He's got his own label over there, Ghost Machine, I think, or whatnot. None of those books interest me, I'm sorry to say. Um, 
so yeah which stinks because like it's it's got a lot of great talent on it but like none of them look like they are gonna be worth my time ryan bernie in the youtube chat says i worked at autozone i would have put them on for you will Uh, the windshield wipers appreciate it would you have kept it clean (laughs) (laughs) what what uh ethnicities are are you do have a problem with (laughs) (laughs) since you're an autozone employee um Weebish says, hey guys, it's me again. Bob, if I were to hypothetically send the ingredients and directions for a basil milkshake to your P.O. <laughs> box, would you make it on the show? No, I would absolutely not. If not on the show, would you make it at all? No, please do not send perishable food yeah. to the P.O. box. That's just a bad idea. You can tell me where to get it, yeah. and maybe I'll go get it. Bob, what controller are you going to use for the CM phone? So I've been thinking about... Okay, oh, we didn't talk about this. No, I I saw you bought it, though. Yeah, so uh, the company Nothing, they make Mm -hmm. earbuds and cell phones, uh, Android phones. Yes. They started another company called CMF Mm -hmm. by Nothing. Uh, And they released a phone that is very cheap. It's $200. It Mm -hmm. seems to be relatively powerful. It has a really nice 120 hertz screen. And what intrigued me about it is that it's cheap and the back has screws in it that are exposed and you can just unscrew the back. Uh, And I tweeted yesterday, hey, if they have 3D printed files for this back piece, that's huge. We could do so much with it. And then today, the owner just tweeted out the files. (laughs) Um, So I immediately bought one and I've been thinking about what to do. Uh, I have a template for a controller that's kind of based off of a Raspberry Pi that you would have to plug in. Uh, but I've been thinking about it, and it might just make more sense to fashion an 8-bit do light uh, like other people have done. Yeah. So I don't know, honestly. I'm not sure what I, what I would do. But I think people really want a slide-out phone, a slide-out controller. Yeah. Like, like phone, and then slides yeah, out like, like a old, sidekick. Yeah. Uh, people want that. I was thinking of having controls on the right and left sides. But okay. because I want to make it a dedicated handheld, right. but I know that other people might want to actually use it as a phone. Mm-hmm. So I don't. I honestly don't know what I'm gonna do yet. So I don't know. Because if it's because uh, if it's a, a handheld, then it could just plug right in. You won't need to use Bluetooth yeah. for the uh, for the controller connection. So I don't know. I don't know what I'll end up doing. Uh, Pike plays games. Says, "Hey Bob, tell Will he should get Witcher Three on." Sh- steam because it's five dollars right now you're i know that's why i asked about it like fine i will put it in my cart right, not the first one i will put it in my cart are you people happy zelda wind waker gamecube game on switch online make it happen nintendo please cmf phone will not work with at&t 5g and not all 5g bands in the u.s really why i did not buy it to connect it to a cell service here are the games I have in my Steam cart right now. Just so you know, I, I put The Witcher 3 in there. Um, I have Children of the Sun. I played the demo of it. It's very good. I need to I will. That. I would recommend that. I have the Prince of Persia Sands of Time trilogy because they're only $2 and those games rip. Uh, I have Mark Echo's Getting Up Contents Under Pressure. That's a PS2 Jesus game. Jesus Christ. That's a PS2 game if I ever, uh, ever heard one. Uh, please leave me alone. I need to poop because... Fuck yeah, I want to play that. Unpacking, because I need more cozy games. Black Mesa. <laughs> uh, Sleeping Dogs, because I've never played it, and I really want to actually like play it. Watch Dogs 2, because I was talking with a friend of the show, Jake, and he said that's the game to get in the series. Um, so I want to try that. And Shadow of War, because it's only $2.50. What's the total? Uh, $55 for... That's not bad. 11 oh, games. <laughs> holy shit. Yeah. That's a lot 14 of 14 games. games, I should say. Sorry. I have not touched this summer sale. I am not going to look. Yeah. I don't want to look. I buy games as I think of them and as I want them. Yeah. I'm going to buy a bunch of stuff and never play them. So I don't want to. I know. Look. I, like, I haven't even like, I just, I beat American Arcadia. I, I'm, I'm going back and forth. Do I want to play Signalis next or do I want to play uh, Hellblade next? So. But then again, I'm I'm not gonna be here next I week. Want, you made me kind of want to play Signalis. I'm not gonna be here next week. I am going on vacation. Uh, it's a long road trip, and I'm gonna bring my analog pocket, and I'm gonna actually try to do a decent amount of uh, Link to the Past. I've dabbled in it. I've never actually like gone like hardcore into it. 
There's a poll on my Twitter asking which version I should play, the GBA version or the SNES version so far. People are telling me to play the SNES version. Yeah, I don't know why the GBA would be worse. I, a big thing people are saying is um, the resolution because they had to redo the resolution for uh... the GBA screen. And also, apparently, Link says, hi every time he swings the sword. So there's a caveat, though. Yeah. Would playing the GBA version be better on this particular handheld? See, because it's a Game Boy Advance, yeah. essentially. I don't know. Wait, no. for what's the, so what's the plan for next week's podcast? I don't know. I forgot that he's going away, <laughs> so I got to figure something out. Um, we'll do something. I don't know. Or we won't. You'll just have to deal with You'll, it. Yeah, we'll see next week. Do your own Wolf Den podcast. Do your own, babe, we'll, we'll give you, we'll send you a kit. Do your own Wolf Den podcast at home. Uh, somebody in the chat before said, uh, oh, Weebish says, would you consider making more controller modding videos or are you pretty much done with that? I'm definitely not done with that. Um, you could see in my recent video, I'm da I, I'm always dabbling in, in that stuff. Uh, I've just gotten a lot more into making things from scratch and that is a lot more involved and a lot harder. So it'd probably be fewer and it'd probably be more few and far between. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, today, instead of doing any of the work that I had to do, I'm on a, I'm very behind on a lot of things. Um, I was working on a, I have this little business card size controller that I've been working on because that is the template for uh, basically any controller you want. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. Have Bingle on, but give him all the hard questions and a paper mask with Will's face printed <laughs> on. Okay, sure. You guys see this? Playcase.gg. Oh, I didn't see. I saw the original. Um, hmm. I saw the prototype for this on like TikTok or something or Reddit. Uh, I didn't know it was a product that you can buy. That's cool. So. Do these just touch the screen? Because I don't like that. I hope it's like an actual button. Phone case, classic faceplate. It seems pretty cool. Oh, it's completely 3D printed. So... Somebody tell me if this is actual buttons. Or if this is just going to touch the screen. Hmm. The Farmer Gooch says, have a safe trip, Will. Thank you. Uh, Will, how do you catch up with your comics? I have a ton I want to catch up uh, with, but don't have a, uh, have a hard time finding a time to do it uh usually it's either during my lunch break uh because it's digital i can just pull them up on my phone uh either during my lunch break or like it's my bedtime reading so like those are those are the best times to do it uh otherwise re replace one leisure activity with reading comics like instead of scrolling twitter read a comic book instead of watching tv read a comic book i gotta do that with games yeah but the problem is, I just play terrible games. Yeah, <laughs> I, I got. I've been trying to play friggin' Zenless Zone Zero. <laughs> That's so easy though. It's a phone game. You can play on the phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this looks like uh, it just touches the screen. I hate that. Mm. Yeah, that's not as tactile as no it, like it, having an actual button. It's like faux tactile. Yeah. You know, I, I, it kind of uh, doesn't solve the problem that I would have with with this. Uh, did we read Snake Eater's uh, comment for 100 bits? My take on the Elden Ring pause. I am a new parent with an eight-month-old baby. If I need to drop the game for my baby, then I will die in the game. Dying in a video game is not as important uh, uh, than real life and my baby. I, I am choosing to play a game that is risky because there is no pause. I am not mad about it. Cheers. Yeah, I mean, look, everybody's different. Yeah. Everybody plays games differently. I think... It's just not, if you're old enough to have a child, you know that the video game is not important. Right. <laughs> you're old enough to know that you could play the game again. Yeah. The game will be there. You yeah. Know? It's just, it's a convenience factor that like 90% of games have. And it's this yeah. one game decides, no, we're not going to do it for whatever 
archaic. I literally reason. think it's a lazy thing. I, yeah. I think that it's just online, and they they didn't want to uh, develop around it. Right. They just decided, ah, we they don't, they don't need it. Yeah. You know. When there should really just be a free state, like yeah. I am. If if if, because it's not like really, it's like a little online. Yeah. It's not like you're. You know, it's not like you know valorant or like a game like that yeah where it's like no. yeah it's not like that it's uh, passively well, unless online. you're playing co-op yeah which i don't think that the game even has no um anyway uh king wizard also gave us uh resubscribe for 23 months i also got confused with the word get and install i don't remember oh that was the epic game yeah stuff, i think Game releases. Alana was also talking about how developers decrease describe these issues straight from the Microsoft handbook. Yeah, the she showed the Microsoft uh, guide for like different types of disability, and like one of them lists like being a parent as a situational disability. Yeah, again, it's there's like, nothing wrong with saying situational disability. Yeah. If you got a better term for it, uh, you can call it whatever you want. Yeah. I just think that's semantics at that point. Yeah. Agree. It doesn't matter what Agree. you call it. All right. I, th I think we're good. Okay. Jacob says, what are your thoughts for on the Fallout games? I didn't really like them. I played a lot of Fallout 3 and uh, never really, really like them. gave them a shot. Uh, Fallout 4 is currently $8 on the Steam sale. That'll be the one. That's a really good deal. Yeah. People were buying that up. All right, thanks for hanging out. Bro. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den and youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast so you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, then you can do that as well because we're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, audible.com even but no matter where you get this show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms speaking of elden ring here's jackson playing elden ring uh i don't know what's gonna happen next week uh we'll probably have a guest on or something but uh then i gotta like schedule somebody oh you're gonna make bob do work yeah then that nah, i don't like that people not fun no but well, I'll see you. Oh, this week's all weird. Uh, I'm probably going to have a video out on Friday, hopefully. Probably I should still stream on Thursday, though. All right, goodbye. Say hello to Jackson. Bye.